Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, everybody, and welcome to your 7.30 p.m. Wednesday night show and tell. It's me, Lady Ada, with me is Mr. Lady Ada on camera control and uh, getting all the guests in a row here on our uh, show and tell stream. I'm going to check in with people from around the world, around the country, around the world, all making, crafting, hacking, soldering, coding in their homes, and they're coming by and showing off what they're working on. We're going to start off with David from DigiKey. We're all Hello used there. To doing, but we didn't. David's much better. Don't tell Kevin. <laughs> David, what, what do you have? We cannot, we're not allowed to play favorites with the DigiKey friends we have. We all, no. we, all we like all of them. I know. Please but don't. we don't get to see Please David. Don't. It's a special treat. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm so excited to be here. I, you know, Kevin always gets to come. Unfortunately, he's on vacation this week, or fortunately for him. So you're stuck with me. But I have a couple things. One thing, I, I, I actually, right now, guys, I can't tell. Are you just showing me or are you showing my screen as well? I'm showing your screen. Okay, so could you just show me for a second? Because yeah. I just want to, sh just one thing. Okay. Um, you know, Kevin has always got all the blinkies and everything. He's always got everything great. But I wanted to do something special just for today. And I've been wanting to do this for a couple years. And so you see my little General Grievous behind me? Yeah. yeah. So Hello turn, on there. turn on General Grievous. Oh, turn on General Grievous. And there we go. Yay! Yay! I finally did it. I've been wanting to do that for so many years. So I'm so excited about that. We meet again. Okay. Simple things. Okay. Channel, so. Channel Grievous is now on a lot of cable package plans. Um, oh, okay. So you can choose if you want that. Awesome. All right. So anyway, we could go back to the screen. I'm sorry about that, Phil. Yeah. I don't mean to. I have, the, I have the same phaser, by the way. I know exactly. Oh, what, yeah, I got the same. One. <laughs> I love that thing. So yeah. um, anyway, so I wanted just to share a couple of things. Just one thing more, actually, uh, and that is we are coming out. As you know, DigiKey has always prided ourselves uh, at supporting maker fairs and other events. And we've had our DigiKey ruler, which is an awesome giveaway. We are going to continue with that. As a matter of fact, we, you know, we can we love selling that. We love giving it away at, at different types of events. We are coming out with a special version version of that called the Midnight Engineering uh, Dark version. So it's going to be very cool. Um, and uh, so that look for that in just a little while. But one of the things we wanted to do was also create something that may be a little bit more a little bit you know, more unique that would be, provide greater value on an ongoing basis for students, for makers, uh, hobbyists, uh, even professional engineers. So we are creating this DigiKey Innovation Handbook, and this is going to print this week. It'll be available as a PDF on our website. And let me just share a little bit of, of what this looks like. So um, I'm going to go into uh, slideshow mode. And the idea here is that no matter what you would be looking for from an electronic standpoint, this kind of gives you that information. So we've got things like, um, you know, all of, yeah, all the basics in here. So okay. formulas and reference information, and but but we go in depth as well. So it's it's not just at the highest levels. We we've, we've got things that go down into the Ooh. the bits and bytes as well. So electronic symbols, logic gates temperature conversions and then we go into the product portfolio and we call out adafruit wherever we can obviously yeah. so we've got resistors and capacitors and discrete leds and addressable leds and op amps and regulators and diodes and motors Ooh, and I like connectors. The, pinouts for the usb i'm always looking those yeah out. back in the day at make um we got pocket refs in and there was specific like make edition it was but it's a it's an older book with like how many quarts of oil will you need to move across the, the sea this yeah. is like a very good, this is a very good, like modern, yeah. modern version. That's like everything. It's like EE -E in a, in a book, in a box. Yeah. And so we've got footprints and pinouts and, and how do you create a PCB and, you know, yeah. IOT elements and some, some stuff where you can see obviously circuit playgrounds and clues and community based things, elements of prototyping board pinouts as well. Um, Key features, feathers, awesome. and what have you. And so the the other thing that we have on here is we've got 120 pages for people to be able to use this to take notes. Great. So oh, people will be able to leverage this on an ongoing basis, and we just think it's going to be great, and we can't wait to get, put it in the hands of people. So okay, I, well, I got I got to ask just because uh, I know what people want to know is for did you wish this year would people be able to get one of these notebooks? Oh, I'm sure. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's going to be a success at make. We did the like maker's notebook um, yeah. that didn't have this much stuff in it and people wanted more and more versions. 
and it's it, this is this is really good. Okay, um, so, you're, you're sending us one, right? I yeah. will absolutely sell you. Okay. Send send them to you. I'll send you a bunch. Okay. Yay. Okay. All right. All right. And Kevin is listening in. Good. Thanks for thanks for hanging out, good. Kevin. We we missed you. Good to see you, David. <laughs> and um, I'll, see I'll, you too. I'll say this before you go. Um, over the last year, we're now recovering. I know DigiKey's in recovery mode too. Yeah. But thank you, uh, everyone at DigiKey. D David is one of the folks who makes the big decisions about doing stuff with Adafruit. Thank you for helping us out over the last year and more. And uh, yeah. we're coming back stronger than ever. Um, and I know that there'll be like challenges from part shortages to who knows, but thanks for being a good partner and a good friend over the last year. You know, you guys make it so easy. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to do everything we do with Adafruit. So thank you so much for the great technology, great community and everything else. We love being a part of it. It's only, it's only a job if you want to do something else. So. Okay. That's, that's All right. right. Okay. All right. Bye, guys. Take care, David. Thanks. All right. This week, I'm going to switch stuff up. We're going to go to Chris Young, who I haven't seen in a while, and then we're going to go to the rest of our team. Chris. Hey, Chris. Take it away. Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. All right. So anyway, this is a project that I um, that went up on the learning guide last, last week, but I was a little bit under the weather. What it is is a an IoT uh, infrared remote. And basically what it does is it serves up a web page that you can click on and uh, then it will operate your cable or your or your, uh, your TV or any kind of uh, different uh, different uh, things here on fast forwarding and rewinding and doing different things. So there's a little demo video there in the guide. But what it consists of, we've got a Raspberry Pi 0W, and then this custom board that Bill Binko helped design. And over here on the right side, we've got my infrared transmitter and receiver circuit. And then this is a QG Pi, an M0 QG Pi. And what happens is the Pi 0 serves the web page and then it communicates with the cutie pie to send the infrared signals. It's a lot easier to do the PWM precisely and to, to read the IO or the infrared signals when you want to learn a signal, do it through the cutie pie. Mm -hmm. And then it, it communicates over the URs, the RX and the TX lines. Now this is kind of a, an old concept I used to have one of these that was based on the Arduino U. It, you know, it was an embedded Linux uh, system that essentially had a uh, uh, Arduino Leonardo sitting on top of it. But we had some people who were interested in this as an assistive technology device. And we said, well, the U is it's such old technology it's so expensive we can do better than that and so for you know what's raspberry pi cost 10 bucks and gd pi is under 10. probably for 20 bucks oh and we've got this thing built and it's working just great so now i'm trying to it, the way it works now is you have to run a special sketch to capture the ir signals and decode them and then manually edit that into a file for the web page. What I'm working on now as a follow-up is a way to make it a real learning remote. Where you just click on a button that says, learn this mm -hmm. signal, and it would learn it, and then be able to play it back. Yeah. So anyway, that's what I've been working on. And really, right. even though this is an IR application, it really is a good replacement for the unit. There'll be lots of other applications because you got your analog IO on the two pound, you got PWM, all that stuff that's hard to do on a Raspberry Pi directly. You gotta just ship it off to the, the two Pi to do mm -hmm. and then communicate between the two. So we're looking for other applications for the same board besides just uh, a remote control like this. All right. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Chris. And as always, it's really good to see you and good work on the guide stuff. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay. Yeah, interesting stuff. All right. And the guide's live for people who want to check it out. Yep. Next up, Noah Pedro. 
Hey folks, uh, so this week we have a cute project. It happens to use the Cutie Pie. It's this little keypad. So I've been wanting to make a kind of custom keypad like with a circular type layout. So I came up with this that kind of looks like a, a lemon. <laughs> um, so it's running CircuitPython and it's got the uh, the Cutie Pie in there. And there's also a little NeoPixel jewel that snap fits in the bottom. Um, it's using the new uh, KL switches. Um, so I probably disconnect this because I don't want to mute right now, but I'm using it as a media player. So it's using the USB HDD library for CircuitPython. So I can um, play music, fast forward, rewind, um, mute, you know, increase and decrease the volume, but you could change it to whatever. And what's interesting about it is like this texture here on the outside is something I didn't actually model into the 3D print. It's actually supposed to be really smooth. Here's like one without it. So this is like a fuzzy skin um, feature texture that you can add to um, in the in the Cura slicer. So here's what it looks like. Yeah, it's neat. It just and adds the randomization. It just that. adds that too. And um, what was interesting about that feature is they recently added it so you can make it so that it has smooths, uh, smooth inside. So you can say, I just want the fuzzy skin on the outside. Mm -hmm. For practical prints where you need like tolerances, you need these little snap snap nubbins. Um, you can you can still do this uh, cool feature and um, have it do that. Oh, my Cutie Pie just popped out. Ah, that's okay. But, uh, yeah, that's okay. But that's cool. But yeah, you could do a media um, controller. You could do a Simon game. I like that it's just yeah, a lemon sure. shape. I don't know. It's cool. You, yeah. So you saw the lemon, and then I had to make, of course, the lime. I like and the lemon. Nice <laughs> and these are, right. So you got kale switches. You got like cherry MX switches. You can use those too. In, in, with fruit, right? It makes sense. Cherries and kale. It's, <laughs> mm, it's delicious. Um, so check it out. We got the learn guide, and we'll probably do a video next week for it. So. Looks great. Okay. Thanks so much. We're going to be playing the speed up on tonight's show on Ask an Engineer. Mm, All right. Next up, JP. What you got going on this week? Uh, mostly, I'm just in love with that keyboard that they just showed. That lemon thing is so cute. I kind of need to make one for yeah. myself. It's I really want to squeeze it. It's awesome. Uh, so I got a couple things. I just uh, published a guide, which is my lifix or lifix lifix light bulb using the funhouse board and a pir uh motion sensor i'm gonna enable it right now since it's really easy to to trigger this thing while i'm holding it here uh and what this does is you'll see i've got a light bulb back here and it's uh it's a it's green which is hard to capture right now uh but it just detected motion and so you'll see it just changed to pink oh, yeah. Uh, it's super saturated in real life. Terrible on this camera. They don't have any. But uh, I guess your your arm is is pink now. That's that. Yeah, it helps right to 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 reflect off of something. Um, and so this uses a couple features of the Fun House. Uh, it's Wi-Fi with ESP thirty two S two that's built on there, so it's talking to the great internet in the sky and then back to the bulb. These LifeX bulbs have a I think probably ESP of some yeah. kind in them. They're they're direct Wi Fi. There's no hub involved. Uh, it's just direct. And then uh, using the interface here, right now it's telling me that it's counting down uh, from I think 30 seconds is the default. And we can use these buttons to increase or decrease the amount of time that it stays on that triggered mode, kind of mimicking the way a uh, motion switch works in a room, like a conference yeah. room or bathroom. So, uh, so check that out. There's code there in CircuitPython for you to customize it. You can also send to multiple bulbs. You could do custom colors. Uh, all sorts of things are, are possible. Uh, once you get the basic thing running. And then the other thing I want to show is right over here, my product pick of the week this week was this adorable little Neo Trinky. And the Neo Trinky I have, uh, it's, a, it's a USB uh, nubbin that's plugged into, everything's a nubbin right now, uh, that's plugged into a long USB extension and into my iPad up here. And so I'm using this as a remote camera trigger. So you can see here, if I look at my iPad, hit oh. the button. We're getting, some, well. uh, we're getting some photos, it works real well. You can use it to trigger video as well. Sometimes you wanna get everything set up and then start a video rolling. It'll start that and then you can hit it a second time to stop. And uh, I'm gonna put some of that code that I did for the uh, for the show up in the Neo Trinky guide, I think, so people can, can grab that and use it and customize it if they want. And then they could also go way beyond that and do things like intervalometers if they wanted to have this thing get triggered and then take a picture every 10 seconds or every hour or whatever you want it to be. Uh, it's really easy to code that right uh, right on that little at SAMD21 that's built onto the lovely little guy. And he's even got some NeoPixels that light up. Oh, adorable. Uh, so many photos. All right. Thank All right. you, thank JP. Thank you, JP. We'll be showing some of the highlights from your shows and more. And then tomorrow is JP's workshop. For yeah. Come on by. We got more fun projects in store. All right. Next up, Scott. 
Hello. You've been combining things. You caught me. I'm <laughs> trying to fix this. So I, yeah, I've been working on updating micro or mic updating what version of MicroPython CircuitPython is based on. Um, and what I'm sharing here is I'm just trying to get all the tests running. I've got like one more test, I think, uh, to get working and then we'll see how all of the different boards build. So for the folks who don't know, cause there's, I think the closest analogy is like, so there's Linux and there's lots of different flavors of Linux. Yeah. And you, and you want to make sure that the latest, the latest Linux that you use has some of the things that the core Linux stuff uses. So what would, right. be, the, what would be the benefit? Cause CircuitPython does a bunch of stuff that MicroPython mm -hmm. doesn't. What's the benefit of adding the latest MicroPython core to the latest version of CircuitPython? So the benefit I think comes down to the fact that we really do rely on that core Python virtual machine, uh, the core Python mechanics from MicroPython. So when you are interacting with CircuitPython or MicroPython, the thing that takes your code, that takes the text that you wrote as Python and, and runs it on the device, like we largely, largely, largely share that with MicroPython. They did an amazing job. Um, I'm complaining about tests failing, but the, like these tests are from MicroPython as well. Um, so they do a really good job at that like really core bit of Python. Um, and I was actually on a podcast and somebody was like, what would you have done uh, to CircuitPython differently if you hadn't started from MicroPython? I was like, I wouldn't have done CircuitPython. Like yeah. this part is just incredibly valuable and they've done an amazing job. So what we get by updating is we get um, maybe some speed improvements, maybe some code size improvements. Uh, we get new features like one of the, the, the more contested controversial features of Python recently is the walrus operator also known as the inline assignment, inside yeah, assignment. Assign, assign and return. Assign and return sort of thing, which is like a colon and, and uh, equal sign. And so that I know that was added to MicroPython at some point. So that's, uh, and then in 113, they redid some of the async IO stuff as well. So like updating really gives us that core, uh, a core update um, to, to the Python engine of CircuitPython. So, we, as of 6.2, we're based on MicroPython from like June of 2018. Uh, so we were quite far behind. And so I've been incrementally doing it kind of every MicroPython release since then. I think we're up uh, to 2019 now. You're caught up to 2019. I think 112, which I'm finishing up is like December of 2019. So yeah. um, it'll be easier going forward. And then people can decide. <laughs> They could decide, yeah. oh, there's this thing that I want that I do in MicroPython, but I also want like all the device support with CircuitPython, so they'll be able to have the best of both worlds. Then we also didn't do, you know, we were we were kind of supposed to keep up to date with every major release, and we we didn't for six, we did for five, I think, or four. So catch yeah. up with seven and maybe with eight, we'll we'll keep up with them again. Yeah, I think so. I know one thing that's really nice is Damien's kind of committed to releasing MicroPython every two months now, which makes like each individual step a lot more tractable. Yeah. Um, like when we kind of like stopped doing it was when we didn't know when the next release was coming. And in fact, the version that we were based on in 6.2 is like not even a proper release for MicroPython. So like that Damien doing that has been really great. Um, also, be easier for us to contribute and people to cherry pick stuff that we've done back into mainline because it'll be more aligned. Yeah, yeah and it's my intention. Yeah, and and some of the challenge of this is actually because we we have like pulled some changes, but not all changes from upstream. Um, and I I fully intend I'm going to email Damien once I'm kind of like all the way through this and be like, hey, we should chat, and because this is like one of the rare times we're kind of closest. Yeah. Uh, in terms of what our code is doing, so. Um, We'll ho hopefully have some good conversations uh, there about getting even cl more close. Um, yeah, like what can we what can we share instead of redoing the same code? That'd be good. Yeah, and like right. it'll be very clear. Like these are the things that we did in this area of the code, and like let's look. So at these those. are the merges, and then are you gonna do a uh, Scott deep dive about this? I already did. Okay. <laughs> and I'm gonna yeah. continue uh, on Friday. So talked about it a lot last Friday. Uh, we'll talk about it this Friday as well. Okay. Um, and we'll do a check-in and, and see where we're at. Okay, for the folks who've watched like us build this, you know, they say airplane in the sky style, like you can see all the bits and pieces of CircuitPython and what it's based on MicroPython kind of got mashed together. So tune in Friday. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, test 7.0 when we release it, because that's one of the reasons we don't do this a lot is because like 
MicroPython and CircuitPython are both really good stable projects, but the merge is really hairy. Uh, mm -hmm. So you get instability from just like the the merge itself. So yeah, testing, you never know. Like testing can... will be really helpful. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> All right, thank I'm you so much, Scott. All right, thanks, Scott. All right, next up, Charlene. Hey, good to see you again. And you Hello. Are good to go. Hi. Hello. Hello, hi, I'm what just here. On? Nice to see you again too. I'm just yeah. here to show my ring project that I've been working on. Um, this it's made the, rounds on Twitters. People really like this. Yeah, so um, I've always wanted to carry LEDs around and I figured I, I figured out a way to do that without having to uh, carry them around um, by themselves. So it's this one and then I made a second one here. <laughs> Ooh. You can kind of see my uh, my soldering job here is getting better yeah. as I do it. Mm -hmm. um, and then this one is like just all subtlety out the door. So it looks like this. They're wearable circuit sculptures, which I really yeah. like. Yeah, because yeah, that, that was like a trend, like circuit Ooh, sculptures. Long, I love long rings. This is yeah. so cool. Yeah, so it's like it's actually quite practical to wear as still. Yes, um, which I'm I was surprised, but yeah, that's it. I, I'm hoping to make more of them, but I just wanted to show you because they're all just Adafruit LED sequins. I love this ring because the battery <laughs> is part of like you know it's underneath this decorative element. It doesn't look faked. You know what I mean? It looks yeah. like it is what it is. Yeah, and like it's it's pretty low profile too. On yeah. The um, and you know, I just have to make sure that I don't poke my own eye out. No, <laughs> fashion is a sacrifice. So yeah, exactly. All right. I, I just gotta go. <laughs> I'm really, I'm really glad right. you understand that. Outstanding I'll work. All right, good work, Sherlyn. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming by. <laughs> all right. All right, next up, Liz and Liz's guitar. Hi, uh, this is Pinkasaurus Rex. Um, so for a really long time, I wanted to build a guitar pedal. I bought parts last year. I finally got around to it. Um, so this is just a breadboarded, very precarious uh, fuzz face circuit. Um, and it's working pretty decently. Uh, so I'm hoping to maybe do a PCB for this and also start messing a bit with the values. I'd already um, swapped out one resistor because um, the gate was really tight. I wasn't getting a lot of volume out. Uh, so that's uh, kind of a Definitely something I'd like thought about when I was just learning to play guitar, but thought it was like impossible. Um, but now I kind of get it. Uh, so that's that cool. Was, uh, kind of what I've been working on. All right, excellent work, Rock Liz. On. And then, folks, don't forget to check Liz's amazing guides on Adafruit Learn System too. And thank you so much, Liz, for sharing your project and some tunes this week. No problem. Thank you. All right, Rock and Liz. Bill, play us out. We got two minutes. Hey, good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, you sound great. Hey, thanks so much. I'm an amateur programmer from Lebanon, New Hampshire. When I saw the Neo Trinky, I just had to give it a try. I always wanted to make a password safe um, on a piece of hardware that I control. So we put the files onto the CircuitPython drive. Yeah. And mm -hmm. then when I hit the left hand button, it flashes. And of course, I had the cursor of the wrong window. There we we're go. Getting, Let's try that again. <laughs> We're getting like one one or two bill frames per second. I can so, see it's like typing yeah, into a Yeah, so now I see it, yeah. Yeah. It was a little fuzzy, but now I can see it. There okay. we go. So you tap on the side and then it, it types the password for you? Yep. And I also have password obfuscation there. Uh, so I can even use the two buttons to put in a, a case change uh, so that what's stored on the drive is not the exact password. But hats off to you guys. This is a wonderful piece of hardware for seven dollars. Yeah, uh, I love it, and I, I, I was very interested to see the new versions of the Trinkies possibly coming out. That's right. Yes, more so, Trinkies. So not only do we have we have a core set of Trinkies, um, and there's little characters that go along with each one. Characters. But then we're going to have not forever Trinkies, not and, forever. and those are Trinkies that we just have a limited part parts run on, like like a really weird scroll wheel or like interesting, maybe even retro displays or something like that. And we're calling them not forever Trinkies or NFTs. They're in the news a lot. And so um, I think as we restart, we're going to be doing our shows uh, on site again at night. Um, we're there at night, but we don't do the shows from there. Um, we're going to start to do giveaways and stuff like that. And I think for people who do cool Trinky projects, maybe they'll get an NFT. Not for oh, that's wonderful. So, hey, so keep last feature, stuff, Bill. The last feature is that this one, I'm going to 
port this over to the MagTag uh, gentleman sending me one, and we'll give it a try. But thank you so much for hey, hey, making this all possible. All right. Collect them all. Collect them all. Thank you, Bill. All right. Thanks, everybody. We're on time. All right. That's the show tonight. We're here every single week or some of the day for team, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. It's show and tell. The longest running live show and tell in the world. Most lemons. Most 3D printed lemons. Most 3D printed lemons. Yeah. True. Okay. We'll see everybody next week. Ask an Engineer starts in two minutes.